Hi, my name is Chris Burry, head chef of Data Kitchen. I'd like to talk to you about the seven steps of data ops. The purpose of my discussion is to, is to go through a series of best practices on how analytic teams can deliver things fast with high quality using the tools that they love. And so as a background, uh, what we hear from the market and what we hear from our customers is that they live their life at Amazon speed. Customers who work with analytic teams, business customers, expect things to be delivered the next day. That's the new normal. And their expectations have changed. It may be in the past that you could have taken a week or a month or a year to deliver insight. Now it's almost an example of instant fulfillment. And analytic teams are failing to do this half the time. Gartner has a report that 50% of all analytic projects fail to meet customer requirements or customer deadlines. And your analytic customers in some ways now expect Amazon fulfillment. They expect the analytic team to deliver things fast, deliver things with high quality, and not to have to buy a new tool at, for every new analytic deliverable. So how do they do that? How do you deliver fast with high quality using the tools that you love? Well, I think the answer is data ops. And data ops is really for analytic teams it's a way to use your current tools to do data science, to do data management, to do visualization in a new way. It applies techniques from software development, specifically agile and something called DevOps techniques to rapidly turn that insight into new deliverables. It applies lean manufacturing principles to create quality analytics and use statistical process control on data. And the result is a rapid response, flexible, and robust data analytics capability. So how do you do that? Well, we boil it down to seven steps, and we're going to walk through each one of these steps. The first step is to add data and logic tests. The second is to view your process end-to-end, -end, from data ingestion to data management and transformation to modeling to visualization to final deployment to the end customer see that as an end-to-end -end process and take that end-to-end -end process and put it in version control. And so version control is a place where you can store things and check out or check in that kind of like an advanced track changes in Microsoft Word. Once you have that process in version control, you can branch it and merge it. That is, you can take a copy of that process and work on it and not interfere with anyone else. And then when you're done, you can turn it back uh, successfully and be able to track the changes. Use multiple environments, reuse and containerize, parameterize your processing, and use simple storage. So the first item, add logic and tests. So if you see your process in the middle there's of the slide, there's accessing, you may use Python code to that, transforming, modeling, you may use R code or Jupyter Notebooks, visualization, you may use Tableau or final delivery in Tableau online. You've got to be able to test both the data and the logic. So first of all, all these tools that you use, in some sense, they're configuration. They're saying, I want to show this chart in this area. But in, all, in many senses, they're actually code in a software developer code. In Tableau, you may be making if complex, if then else statements. Uh, in a Jupyter Notebook, you're programming in Python. In a ETL tool, you may be doing SQL or uh, doing a complex chain of logic. And finally, to access, you may have scripts. All of these things are code, and if you're going to make changes to one piece of the code, you want to make sure that you haven't broken anything else. And the other side of it is you want to look at your data as flowing through the system. You want to make sure the data is free of inputs. As it passes through each step of your process, you want to make sure the resulting numbers are right or not out of range or haven't changed since the last run. And are your outputs consistent? And once you've done data and logic and tests, you want to save those because that's actually valuable information for you to use. The second step is to take this whole process from accessing data uh, doing the transforms, modeling, visualizing, reporting, and put it all into version control. Because our perspective is at the, end of, at the end of the day, analytic work is just code, the same way that software teams of software developers make code. And that code means complexity. And you need to, you know, the first key of cleaning up any mess is putting it in one place. 
So there's an open source control system called Git. There are other source control or version control systems that you can use. The third step is branch and merge. And if you ever walk into a software developer's development manager's office, you see these diagrams on the board. And so if you imagine that line that's going across the middle of the slide is kind of production or the thing that is steady, there are people who are branched from that to do some work. In this case, they're doing task A or task B. They branch that, they do their work, and then they merge it back in. And that way you can have multiple people working together on the same process where they don't step on each other's toes. Um, and again, that's a tools version control system like Git enables you to do that. Use multiple environments. Uh, the team at Data Kitchen has managed uh, software engineers for many years, as well as teams of uh, data scientists, data, data engineers, analysts. And the key to people working successfully is that they can kind of have their own environment to do work where they can make experiments, do tests, and not really break anything. And I'm always amazed at the number of analytic teams who are kind of working on production or working on the live system. So you want to make sure that your, uh, your development, your analytic team is working in a place where they can't break anything. And second is when they work in a place where they can't break anything, you want to be able to merge their work back into production. So if I have a set of production systems and I've done work in that controlled environment, I want to be able to merge those changes into production. And I want to make sure I, when I merge those changes that I've done all my tests, my new tests, all the historic tests. And that way we get rid of, by doing this, you get rid of the sort of her her hero bottleneck, that one guy who knows how the system works and you have to ask him or her if your change is going to work and since him or her has it all in his head, could it break? And so by doing this, you empower people to make changes fast and in a very safe and controlled way. And reuse and containerize. So there are best practices that apply to analytics You want to, uh, from software development. You want to be able to take your code and put it into smaller pieces that you can reuse if you need. And then second is you want to treat the environment that your systems run on as reusable pieces. And so there's some new technology called Docker and containers that you want to wrap those tools that we talked about, your ETL tool, your data science tool, and you want to practice environment version control because nothing worse is having it, having version 1.2 on your developer's machine and version 2.0 on production and tracing down that bug after hours. It's just very frustrating. And parameterize your process. And so a lot of times the production process can take minutes or hours to complete. And you want to be able to run it in pieces. You want to parameterize it as a function. And so you can say, I want to run just the front end of it, just the back end of it, just a piece of it. And being able to parameterize your process is a key way to achieve flexibility and speed. And finally, you want to use simple storage. And so what simple storage offers you is a, is a place to, since you're trying to have your development team create their own environment to do work, run their own tests based on their own uh, branch, you want them to be able to get a copy of the data that they're going to use, either the whole data set or a subset of the data. And that may be the raw data or it may be a, um, a copy of a database that they can work on. And so being able to create data marts on demand, being able to create their own environment on demand and then throw it away, that elasticity, that virtualization is part of the success state for the seven steps to analytics. And so let me summarize. Uh, the seven steps of data ops are add data and, or add data and logic tests, add end-to-end -end steps into version control, branch and merge, use multiple environments, reuse and containerize, parameterize your process, and use simple storage. And we think that the, if you follow these steps, you'll be able to live in a world where it's at Amazon speed. Thank you much.